It has everything to do with demonic tax. I'm going to take your question. Amal said, since my reversion in Catholicism, I was attacked by demons twice. Both instances were when I was fasting. Don't you know why, Amal? As you go to Matthew 12, 43, 45. <clears throat> Even Satan attacked Jesus when he was fasting. Don't you know why, Amal, you are being attacked? Be wise as serpents, innocent, harmless as doves. Because your fasting makes you more powerful in the spirit realm. The more you fast, the more you pray, the more you study scripture, the more you meditate on God's word, the more you obey, the more deadly you become against Satan, and the more afraid he is of you. So what do... The evil spirits do distract you in order to discourage you from praying and fasting. Now, if you give in, then they know how to stop you from being a danger against the kingdom of darkness. You get it now, Amal? And the second reason is when you're fasting, that's when you're physically weak. And if you're physically weak, it, it impacts you intellectually, mentally, psychologically, emotionally. So... They take that as an opportunity to prey on you. She's physically weak because when you're physically weak, you have a hard time staying focused because you get agitated. You want to give up. So you're not at your optimal psychological and emotional state. So they prey on that moment, seeing that you are at a weak state and hoping that during that moment of weakness, they can cause you to succumb, stumble, and sin. And grieve the Holy Spirit. You got it? Don't fall for their traps and snares. That should motivate you. If you're being attacked when you're fasting, that's a sign you're doing something good. Because Satan won't attack you when you're doing something bad. He'll encourage you all the more to do something sinful and wicked. Now read Matthew 12, 43, 45. When an unclean spirit goes out, <clears throat> out of a man... He goes to dry places, seeking rest, and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept, and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So there are spirits that are more wicked than other spirits? Yeah. To finish it. So then he takes seven other spirits more wicked than him. You understand that even in the kingdom of darkness, there are some spirits more wicked, more vile, more evil, more powerful, more filthy, that even other spirits fear them. Even other spirits stand in awe of how wicked and evil these higher-ranking spirits happen to be. That's spirit one is something else. Yeah. Now keep reading all the way to 45, finish it. He brings seven more. And they enter and dwell there. And then and the last state of that man is worse than the first. So shall it also be with this wicked generation. See? You see what the Lord is saying? Now let me explain the point of that parable. The Lord likens your heart, your soul, your mind, your inner person as a house. You see, again, because that evil spirit left a person, that evil spirit left someone that he had possessed and oppressed. <clears throat> so the Lord likens your inner person, your inner man, so to speak, your heart, your mind, your soul to a house. If the house is empty, someone has to occupy it. So learn what the Lord is teaching you. The Lord is teaching you. You are a temple, a house, a home. Someone must live in it. If God is not living in it, then it is Satan or an evil spirit. Do not de deceive yourself. No human being is empty. All human beings are homes, temples for someone to dwell in. So if God is not dwelling in it, then an evil spirit, if not Satan himself, will take occupancy in your heart in your mind, in your inner person. That's what the Lord's teaching you. That's what he said. When he finds the house empty but tidy, that's what he said, right? You just read it, correct? In order. A house that's tidy 
but still empty, having no occupant, then he not only re-enters that person, he brings seven more evil spirits to make that person's life much worse than it was before that evil spirit had left. His condition will become much worse than at the beginning when he was occupied by one evil spirit. You know me there? Yeah. So this is what the Lord is teaching you here. <clears throat> What's the point? Either the triune God occupies you, either the Holy Spirit indwells you and fills you, or an evil spirit does. But there are no vacancies. No human heart, no human mind, no human soul can be vacant. It must be occupied by someone. You get it? Yeah. Are you seeing it, right? But I want you to catch, go back to 43, 44, read. When that evil spirit left the man, where did he go? Read for me where he went. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry mm -hmm. places. Notice he doesn't look for watery places. Did you catch it? Mm -hmm. An evil spirit looks for desert, parched land, wilderness. It doesn't look for watery places, right? Right. Okay, now, do me a favor. Go to Mark 5. Let me show you another connection, verses 1 to 10. Watch where I'm going to go with this. Pay attention, guys. Evil spirits look for desert, parched land, wilderness, arid places, dry places, not watery places. Okay? You guys listening? Thank the Lord Jesus. We've got a good crowd, so we're going to go into some spiritual meat. Read Mark 5, verses 1 to 10, the demoniacs, legion. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the... Go ahead. Gadarenes or Gerasenes, doesn't matter. You're not going to visit anytime soon. <laughs> and when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tomb, a man with an unclean spirit. So he came out of what? Tombs, a graveyard, pay attention. A demoniac is coming out of the tombs, graveyard. Let's see who's paying attention. Keep going. Wow. Ask me questions on that. Pass that line along. Verse 3, who had his dwelling among the tombs? And no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bond with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken into pieces. Yep. He, neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. So he was far away in dry, arid places, mountainous regions, and in the tombs, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, keep reading. When he saw Jesus from afar... He ran and worshipped him, and he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you, by God, that you do not torture me, torment me. Yep. All the way for, to he said, for he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, what is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also, he begged him earnestly that he would not be sent out of the country. Now, a large herd of swine was feeding there near the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine that we may enter down. Okay, now pause right there. We're going to break it down. Notice demons dwell in tombs, dry, arid places, and occupy unclean animals, pigs. They would rather indwell swine, which is an unclean animal by Jewish law, than be driven out of that countryside. Now, what's the implication? Why tombs? What do you find in tombs? Dead bodies. Mm -hmm. Why dry, arid places? Because scripture teaches... If you are spiritually dead and you don't have the living waters dwelling in you, the Holy Spirit, then you don't belong to Christ. 
Why do they like dry places? Because a place that's watered represents a heart made alive by the living waters, the Holy Spirit. John 7, 38 to 39. Read it. John 7, 38 to 39. Right here. John 7, 38, 39. This tells you where demons dwell and what do they like to occupy. John 7, 38 to 39. 38 to 39? Yep. He who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Yep. But this, he spoke concerning the spirit, whom, whom the, those believing in him will receive. But the Holy Spirit was not yet given because Jesus was has not yet been glorified. Did you catch it? Living waters, the waters of life, the springs of living waters, Holy Spirit. Why do demons like dry places, parched land, arid places? Because that represents soil that's not watered, a heart that's dead and not made alive by the Holy Spirit. Demons occupy spiritually dead people who do not have the living waters of life bubbling within them unto eternal life, who do not have the Holy Spirit. That's what you're supposed to learn from these examples. Evil spirits occupy people who are not born of the Spirit, who are dead in their trespasses, enslaved to sin. Those who are made alive, who are dead are now made alive, who are now born of the Spirit and have the Holy Spirit indwelling them, the spring of the waters of life, they are occupied by God, not by demons, not by evil spirits. Go to Colossians 2, verses 11 and 13. And we'll talk about the pigs in a minute. Okay, if you go to Colossians 2, 11 and 13. <clears throat> in him you are also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by a circumcision of Christ buried with him in baptism in which you were also raised with him through faith and the working of God who raised him from the dead so and we'll, you finish it all the way 13 finish it and when being dead in your trust passes and the uncircumcision of your flesh he has made alive again together with him having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay, so notice, someone who is spiritually dead, who doesn't have the spring of the water of life, the Holy Spirit, right? That is soil, that is land that evil spirits occupy. But once you turn to Christ, now you have the spring of the water of life indwelling you, the Holy Spirit who now makes you alive, unites you to Christ. Now you have God filling you and occupying you. So what's the point to learn from these examples? Evil spirits look for dead people who are dry and do not have the spring of the water of life living in them, who are not born of the Spirit, who do not have the Spirit, who do not belong to the Spirit, and therefore are not united to Christ. Are you catching the implication of why an evil spirit goes and looks for a dry, arid place? Or why these evil spirits drove the man to a graveyard, to a tomb, because those physically dead bodies signify his condition. That like them, he's dead, but he's dead spiritually while they're dead physically. Is it all making sense or no? If you're not born of the Spirit, that means you're dry spiritually and you're dead spiritually. But if you have the Holy Spirit, you're now alive spiritually and you have living waters flowing within you. That's spiritual waters, meaning the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is likened to water. Why? Because water refreshes you. Water cleanses you. Water gives you life. No water, you die. Likewise, without the Holy Spirit, you're dead. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't be cleansed. Without the Holy Spirit, you can't be refreshed. So no better apt metaphor for the Spirit than water. I don't drink water, I die. I have no water, I'm dirty. <clears throat> right? So water cleanses me, refreshes me, Without water, I can't live. Likewise, the Holy Spirit refreshes me, purifies me, and without the Holy Spirit, I can't live. So what an apt metaphor for the Spirit, right? 
So now let's talk about, now, Judeo Christian, you got it? I didn't know. I'm sorry. I thought you were trouble. Thank the Lord Jesus you're not. I hope you got it. Now, <clears throat> why pigs? Because according to the law, according to the law, pig is an unclean animal. Again, note the connection. Evil spirits only indwell that which is unclean. That which is clean is indwelt by God. You catch it now? Why are they asking the Lord, drive us into the herd of pigs? Because as far as the law is concerned, these were considered unclean animals, unfit for God's covenant people to consume under the Mosaic covenant. So again, what's the point here? You're supposed to see that demons only dwell and dwell, occupy that which is unclean, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but now notice the reaction of the swine. The swine <clears throat> ran off the cliff into what? What did they, when they, when the unclean spirits entered them, they ran off the cliff into what? If you read Mark, Mark 5, into what? The water, right? The very thing evil spirits hate. So note what the Lord is showing you here. Even an unclean animal would rather die than be possessed by an evil spirit. Even an unclean animal has enough common sense to not want to be possessed by an evil spirit. And yet human beings are comfortable being possessed by evil spirits wrecking havoc on their life. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So note, the very place that evil spirits hate to, to, end, uh, to dwell, watery places, is where they ended up anyway. And what was the cause of them being driven to a watery place? Unclean animals who had enough common sense to rather die than to have evil spirits possess them. And yet human beings who are supposed to be more sensible are okay with evil spirits possessing them and wrecking havoc on their lives. Is that amazing? Yeah. Are you guys catching the point? Another point you're supposed to see, that God values human life more than animal life. If there's a choice between a human dying or an animal dying, God will allow an animal to die over against a human because God loves humans more than animals. So whereas the Lord did not allow evil spirits to occupy a human being created in his image, he did allow them to occupy animals because animals are less in worth and value in the sight of God than human beings. God loves humans more than animals. It's not he hates animals, but if he's going to sacrifice one over the other, Animals we sacrifice in order to spare a human soul. Mm -hmm. So hope you got the point. I don't know if that made sense. Yeah, it did. So, and all this goes back to using your sister as an example, a perfect illustration. Even though her love, her life is about to <clears throat> just become hell, it's spinning out of control. In spite of all that she's currently going through, and it's going to get much worse, instead of com coming to her senses and turning to Jesus and asking the Spirit to fill her and cleanse her of this unclean influence, she'd rather continue this path of destruction, showing she has less sense than even a herd of swine, that the moment they came in contact with evil spirits, they chose death rather than to be occupied by unclean spirits. Mm. you catch it yeah 